Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Shrikala. I'm the school counselor from GEMS Modern Academy. Um, I see that we are a bit spaced uh, across the room. If you would like at some point to come in front, that would be good um, because we are going to have a little bit of movement in any case. <coughs> um, I'd like to introduce my um, student, Mr. Vikram Ajit, who will also be speaking uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, as I said, I am the school counselor, I teach psychology. I also don a few other hats, like most of us do from time to time in school. Uh, and it is my privilege today to talk to you on how the school wellness officer uh, creates a healthy work environment. Before I start, can I see how, uh, can we see through a show of hands, how many schools here uh, have a school wellness officer? Okay, how many schools have a welfare officer? Okay, uh, it's a bit easy to do this part of the math, but I did see more hands up for welfare. Uh, we're not commenting on anyone who doesn't have because we're getting down to uh, why we need to have and the importance of having it. But I'm looking at because there were more hands up for welfare than for wellness. Yes, uh, for welfare than for wellness and because we're going to be talking about wellness for the for a bit now, let's take a look at what welfare means. Is there a difference? Do we mean to imply that there's a difference between welfare and wellness? Is there a difference between welfare and wellness? Do they mean the same thing? What does welfare mean? Wellness could be your inner uh, well-being. Okay. And welfare could be also welfare of the society, of people around you, of your own self. Okay. So you're saying they sort of mean the same thing. So, okay. But yeah, there's a difference. There is a difference. Anyone wants to clarify that difference between welfare and wellness and why can't we use wellness slash welfare? Wellness is also to do with health. Okay. Wellness has to do with health. Mm -hmm. Whereas welfare is to do with your, you know, uh, the living conditions. Living conditions, economical conditions, uh, when we talk about social financial support financial systems, financial. sorry? Financial. Financial, financial needs, uh, uh, when we talk about social support systems, health, the infrastructure, living conditions, that's what seems to come to our mind more than welfare, uh, whereas wellness is a more holistic uh, understanding. Before we actually get into the, um, stand, take a look at one of the standard definitions of wellness, because I'm going to touch at two things in today's topic. One is the wellness part of our topic and the work environment part of our topic. So, uh, also deals with the spiritual uh, Oh, brilliant. Wellness de deals with inner, as she said, spiritual yeah, aspect. Yeah. So what I want you to do is, um, I had thought of in groups of three because I'd expected a larger group, but since we are a smaller group, I will, you will find that on the table in front of you, there are a couple of shapes. Uh, each one of you should have a set of shapes. Now when you hear the word wellness, which of these shapes would you most closely identify? Which shape to you suits your definition of wellness? Ideally, you should have four shapes. Now, when you select your shape, I'd like you to raise it up higher for everybody in the group to see so we can take a look at. <coughs> and I'm waiting for that little, we call it masala, little spice. Okay, uh, I haven't seen everyone's. Is everyone's up no. there? All right. So we've got mostly rounds and mostly things. I'd like a few responses on why we've selected. Why did we select round shape? What came to your mind? Okay. Each other. Okay. It completes each other. The word complete. Yes. Every walk of life, you can find me exactly alike in education, in health, in my environment, in my dealing. You can find me. Okay. So there is equality in all walks of life. All right. Yes, ma'am. 
there's no corner, no stumbling block, so we may say it's wellness. Okay, it's wellness, so it goes me, on, there's nothing. It's spirituality because it connects me to the universe. Okay, the shape round the shape. connects you. Alright, brilliant, it connects you with your higher self. There's no stumbling block there. Uh, yes, thing. yes. This is play. If we consider the same thing in 3D, then it will become a space so every person have his own space. All right. It refers to personal space, your personal sense of space. All right. Anybody else wants to respond to why row, why round? Because is it because the word wholesome uh, comes to mind and it is signified by circle? Why round? Why do you pick round? One word in history repeats itself. All right. So there is a pattern of repetitiveness. Uh, for those who have just come in, what we are doing, you may see a couple of shapes on your table. What we are doing at the moment is selecting that shape which most closely signifies wellness. Now, by that I do not mean that the lone gentleman who raised the square is wrong. We are very interested to know why you chose a square. Okay, it's just equal on all sides, all right? So there's equality over here. So what I'm getting from this is what we understand as wellness. No yes, sir. Point, no end point. All right, so it's continuous and it's ongoing. All right, so to take a look at how we have defined wellness, and wellness is difficult to define. When we are looking at a wellness program or we are looking at, we, it is difficult to define exactly what is wellness because it is subjective. But if we are to look at what definition we've come up with now, it's personal, it, it relates to our sense of space, it's holistic, there's spirituality, connection with the higher order, it means complete, no obstacle and continuous. If there's anyone who wants to add on to something at this point, then I want you to look at this definition by Halbert Dunn and his excellent book which I must admit I have not read the whole book, I have just read abstracts but it is very promising, the high level wellness book and his definition, it is an integrated method of functioning oriented to maximizing the potential. Note the word integration, what would the word integration mean? Yes, joining the smaller pieces, pieces parts, parts, events, events, events parts, thoughts, visions, visions. Coordinate, uh, function. clearly you haven't had as much lunch as the others because they are still warming up, <laughs> they are still warming up. Uh, it's the direct opposite of differentiation, that dreaded word, yes. It is, uh, it refers to a sum of its parts, it refers to wholesome. Now this is a very interesting word I thought because it means wholesome is not just about you know all of this, it means there is an amalgamation of the parts of our life. It means it is the sum of all parts of our life. Now why is this important to us as people? Why is it important? Why is there all this? It's you know it's a bit of a new agey term, wellness, it's a new age term just like aromatherapy and stone therapy and all of those new age therapies. It's a new age term, but why is wellness important to us as an individual if you have to look at it from integration? Because we are all social human beings and we are social, so we need to fit in with others as well. Okay. So it helps you to be more emotionally stable and empowered. Okay. So it's an important component of adjusting to society, of being a productive member of society, all right? What else? Why must I look at wellness? Because that's also a key, key to my happiness. It's a key to your happiness. And as and we just... happiness of others as well. Yes. And as we say, it is spilling on from one area yes. onto the other. Why is it important to look at it from the school's point of view? We're dealing with humans. We're dealing with children. We are happy all right brilliant if we are happy it transmits see the word integration and why it sparked off so many thoughts it means if I'm happy then I'm obviously contributing to a happier learning environment and we would all say to ourselves of course I know that but in reality we know how practically difficult it is it means and the reason why this is and it's it's a great idea that the KHT has come up with this particular theme because it means it is high time we look beyond the teacher 
as just someone who has to deliver. If we have to sustain our staff, if we have to sustain ourselves in professions in our and our staff, we have to look at this wholesome development of individuals. It is not enough for a teacher, including yourselves, to be the sort who delivers the grades on time, is punctual, is professional, knows exactly what to say because there could be other areas that are being affected. All right. So one of the reasons why wellness is being looked at very seriously in schools is because there is a growing realization that if we have to nurture and let us face it, we are all teachers here. Are we all teachers in this group uh, or at least associated with schools? Uh, it is a tough job and it is getting tougher. Uh, because of the generation that we are dealing with, the people that we are dealing with, the kids are, we have a student here, but the kids are smarter than us, they are getting smarter than us. So in order to sustain our motivation, in order to sustain ourselves, we do need to look at all round wellness. Now when I am talking about this, what am I really talking, so what is wellness made up of? What would it be made up of? Alright, so it is this circle, it is this continuous process all right good health okay okay I would like you when I put this down to take a look at this and tell me if you pick or if you spot a contradiction doesn't matter if you don't but if you do I'd like you to point that out I feel that vitality and passion is fine, but when you have hunger for more, you know, ambition can slowly become over ambition, and mm. that's where your wellness stops. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, that's where your greed begins. Okay. The fine line between wanting to do more and wanting and just having right enough. Anybody else? Any other contradiction? Pushing, beyond Pushing the yourselves limit. beyond the limit. Again, movement and slow and steady, steady growth in growth generally you don't see slow and steady growth these days. Yeah. It's always, you know, you you really need to be, you know, driven so much that you, you know, break all the, uh, you know, speed breakers and just move fast. Yeah. That's the way it's generally seen. Yeah. This is, re know, sorry? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it should be linked with the success. That is integrity is success. Wellness is the need for a success. Okay. Wellness is the need for success. What we are really pointing out to here is the contradiction to our times, in our times yes. here. On one hand, it's the higher rating, it's the bigger school, it's the higher infrastructure, it's the bigger bank balance, the higher grades, the better colleges and so on. And so we are being bombarded, we as well as the kids are being bombarded with messages of strive for what you want. You can visualize the life that you want and how easy it is for that balance to uh, just tip. Do you think there is some amount of subjectivity? Am I saying therefore, am I saying that it is wrong to hunger for more? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. But yeah, you have to strike a balance. You know, you should know where to stop. Okay. So, where do I stop? That brings me to my next point. How do I know I am well and where do I stop? As a person I, as well as a school. I feel when you start a certain restlessness in spite of the fact that you've achieved in terms of material success. Okay, restlessness. Yet you're unhappy restlessness. Or stressed out. Okay, stressed, unhappy in spite of successes. Yes. All right. At a point when you're not enjoying it enough. Okay, lack of enjoyment, absolutely. But you don't stop. You just find another way. Ah. <coughs> you don't stop. You just find another way. That's one way to get back to your wellness, okay. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the wellness and distress cycle of uh, in stress. Uh, it's a concept in psychology which means that we are all bombarded with stress. It all depends on which avenues you take. For example, you might stop here, but like she said, if I'm able to find a more productive way, then I will find another way of dealing with 
my stress that same concept over here. So, um, we will look at wellness here uh, the whole point is to know that I am looking at two key indicators of the fact that I am not well. Uh, restlessness, lack of enjoyment, even when I am successful, I am doing, I am plodding, going on and on without any um, sort of um, real understanding as to why I am doing it, that is clearly a sign of not being well. I would like to share for s at, at this point a case study. Um, I am, uh, as I said, I teach psychology. So, this year, uh, the school, the group of students that I was teaching were science students and you know they had a bit of a, they didn't have a very promising opinion of one of their teachers. So it was a bit of good, good natured um, cribbing that every day they talk about her and uh, there was a time when they got around to talking about could she have some problems, could there be something bothering her. It, it developed from cribbing to concern. Up to a point when we came to that one chapter which they all wait for in psychology which is mental disorders mm -hmm. and uh, we came to that topic mood disorders and that is when and that is really what set me thinking because we were looking at causes and factors and symptoms and that is when one whole period the children said you know maybe ma'am needs help maybe somebody is overlooking it. We are talking about a sincere teacher here, we are talking about a good teacher, but they said maybe there is something wrong that and somebody needs to talk to her. It turned out that there was an incident where I had to talk to her at roughly that time. Uh, a conversation that went, started on one plane, went on to a completely different plane and a whole door was opened whereby a whole range of issues, personal, uh, financial career, she was looking at whether she wanted to continue with teaching in her life, is this what she wanted to do, so she was at those crossroads. I am quite happy to say that this particular teacher is on leave, she has been granted a year's leave uh, at school, uh, not because she is sick, she is not sick, but she needs a good, she needs to take a good look at does she want to go ahead, she needs to take a good look at can I keep going, I am a good teacher. I get my grades, I get my students to get the grades, I am not late and you are not going to find fault with me on that, but I cannot go on like this and therefore this is one in the, and so it, it required that, that little incident or a little conversation for her to finally say okay that is it, if this is spilling on to students and if they are picking out then I have to stop and it required us to do this little additional, it is not about granting sick leave which every school does, but about being flexible to these larger rules so that people can find their way to do what they really want. Okay? So, the key here is to see am I still being happy, now happy is a big subject to trap again, but it does mean are you productive in life. So, here are your indicators for wellness, generally understood the world over as wellness. Uh, I would be very interested, we will we'll see in a minute how, how well we fare on this, but good physical health, we are sitting on a time bomb or the world over with obesity and hypertension and all of that and very little time to exercise. Um, sense of purpose or meaning in daily activities, this remains one of the most significant indicators of uh, well-being, having a sense of purpose. Uh, some years ago, I have had offices all over the school, you know it becomes easy to coax the loan counsellor to take this office, take that office. So, um, in one of my offices and I had a nice board that I did not have the time to decorate. Uh, there was a new teacher who joined our school that year, she, was, she joined as a float teacher. She was trying to make friends, I did see her move around, I was too busy really to engage in any conversation, but she took some time to walk around and she would pass my office every day on her way to class and she stepped in one day and said, she was trying to strike up a conversation, I was very busy, she was trying to strike up a conversation, then she looked at the board and she said, oh you do not have anything on this board, I said yeah, yeah, you should put something up, the kids will like it, yeah, 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 you know I had, I was doing some work over there, she said can I do something for you? I said okay and she had been talking for such a long time that I said okay go ahead. 
Next day, she comes with this long strips of chart paper on which she has painstakingly painted her thumbs in different colors. And she has, she said, please go ahead and do your work. And she sat down and she, she spent two periods doing up my board. I still have it. I have moved offices thrice, but I still have that board because to me, it showed me this is a person who wants to feel useful. This is, that's all she wants. She was trying to find her way in school. We've had induction programs. We've had mentoring programs. This thing, but she needed to show somebody, I'm good at this. So these little things as a school and as if you're in the management position or if even as a teacher, if you can keep your eyes peeled out to help somebody else find meaning in little things. We do it for children, but we forget to do it for ourselves. And so for yourselves also, because this remains as, I think I'm getting his name pronounced right, the German philosopher Nietzsche, I hope, Nietzsche, thank you. Uh, he said, if you can help a man to figure out why, then you won't have to worry about the how, because he will go ahead. Progressive functioning in work related areas, I'm going to come to that in a minute. Productive social interactions, the sense of being connected to the community and the world. I'm not talking about Twitter or Facebook. I'm talking about real time. Have you ever wondered why there is a spike in the number of people signing up for volunteering programs? Uh, we are connected more than ever, but the number of people and across age groups, I get calls from lots of parents saying, tell me if there's something that there is to want to do in the world. I am comfort in the school. I am comfortable. I would like to give back to society. It all arises from a need to be connected, to know what's happening around. Let's take a quick look yes, sir, at, yes, yeah. If all these factors are there, then we can say that that man is well. If all these factors, these parameters are there in a family, then that family can say that Ooh. that family is well. What do you think? I'm going to throw it back to the if group. Any any factor is missing for them for health wise, he is not good. Mm. Then remaining all factors are there. Then can we say that that family is well or not? What do you think? Going back to the discussion we have had so far, sir is asking if all these factors are there. Am I well as a family, as a school, as a person? But and if there is any one, one correct, then, if there is one so area, no, his example was that if there is a person who is a heart patient, does that mean the person is not well? Are we talking about someone being deficient or for example, I am a construction worker. I earn only a thousand. I have own, no financial security. Would I be unwell? Yes. Maybe. Okay. It's always a door of for improvement. Correct. So we cannot consider hundred percent, rather ninety percent, eighty five percent. It's fine, but by saying an ideal state for any person or for school or for family, it is I think practically impossible. Impossible. What we are talking about is of course utopia. What we are selling here is utopia. Is there is such a contain so many orders, lower order, middle Correct. order, higher order. Correct. So we can make three sets. Lower order, first set, second order, middle, then higher, then superior. You know, I always tell students when I do workshops like this and they say, I'm not like this all the time or I'm like this only sometimes. I always tell them, give yourself an 8 on 10. Don't look at 10 on 10. Don't look at 9 on 10. Look at 8 as the highest and you'd still be somewhere in between because this is we're not talking about you being 10 on 10 on this we're not talking about you being 8 on 10 on this the point he said something it's about improvement if you are if you have the will and if you're doing things to improve even if you're low on financial security or on physical health the key is if there is improvement strategies and if you're trying to improve it you're well that's you may this, not be that's why this was selected yes I mean process. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I do need to move on for purposes of time very quickly before we sit into a further post lunch slump. 
I would like to introduce to you one of, there are many, many models of uh, wellness. This is the six dimensional model of wellness by Bill Hetler from the National Institute of Wellness in the United States. Uh, these are generally the six areas that uh, of wellness that have been identified. Now what I would like you to do is as you can see there are little corners, uh, well, not really corners but uh, name tags around the room. That one area which you think you are most well in since we have already decided that we cannot be well in all areas. That one area which you think you are most well in, I would like you to stand up and find your position under that name tag. It's okay to have a couple of homing pigeons here uh, who feel their overall wellness but certain areas where you feel you are most well in, please do try and take a position. There is spiritual, social, okay, intellectual, physical, are you all PE teachers? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and these are the uh, homing pigeons, I think they are still looking for some. There is occupational wellness here for, uh, oh dear, this is worrying. We don't have people who are occupationally well. Hmm. We must take a look at what that means. Could, could we get a consensus on which is the largest group here? Do we have more of homing pigeons or I see a big group at spiritual, uh, then comes the intellectual but I think the majority would consider themselves in this group to be uniformly well. All right, excellent. Back to your seats. I do find it very interesting that I nobody chose. <laughs> I find it very interesting that nobody selected this. Let's take a look why. Okay. Sorry? I think a study should be done why. Yes, absolutely. Nobody stood for the record, nobody stood at the wellness. So, um, I'm now coming to what we really have to talk about in terms of, uh, see we could go on all afternoon about wellness, but in order to narrow down our focus onto the topic which is about how do we have a wellness program at school and how do we use it to create a healthy work environment. Essentially there are three components. From the discussion that we've had, it's not possible to look at, it may not be practical to look at all areas, but the three areas, the three key questions that we ask in a wellness program. Does this program help to achieve their full potential? Am I as a teacher achieving my potential? Am I as an administrator or a management person in the school helping teachers achieve their full potential? Is, does this look at their multi-dimensional, does it have a multi-dimensional approach? Am I just looking at how they deliver in the classroom? And lastly, how do I use affirm and mobilize their positive qualities and strengths. For purposes of time, I've picked three areas which um, at modern um, really works for us. And that is, um, the first is of course social. I would like you to have a good look at this tree and tell me what you see besides the tree, of course. The leaves are different, different shapes, colors, okay. I missed something here. Shape and color of the tree. I see a human being structure in the middle of the trunk. Okay. Uh, in the center of the trunk. Of the trunk. Okay. The four, the four quadrants of the circle. All right. Mm -hmm. How does it look to you? How does is this a is this a strong, root. strong roots? Okay. What sort of a tree it is? I didn't I didn't know what sort of a tree I because it's some sort of a symbol for unity or integration again. Okay, brilliant unity, integration. Um, to me, the tree sim, sim, uh, symbolized um, unity in diversity. Now, it's a exactly. cl cliched thing, but really what it means is each one of those leaves is almost each one of them is different in shape, in color. I don't even know what the tree is because it's so different and yet it is so strongly rooted over there. Social wellness or any aspect of a social wellness program should essentially aim to do this. To accept the differences, 
so that we don't have to force people to conform and yet to help them develop a firm sense of rootedness in the organization. Uh, when you talk about the quadrants, I must share a, a very interesting theory that I came across. It's by uh, a man named Tom Roth and his colleagues who are doing a lot of work in social wellness in organizations and they refer to it as the four friends theory, um, which says very simply that any individual is considered to have social wellness in an organization if they have four friends. They don't have to be from the same section or from the same department, but it could be a person who has four friends. Any ideas on why? What's, no, what's with the number four? The four quadrants, because the four, quad, four refers to a square which is complete and equally divided. Of course, it's a very long study that I'm sure you'd enjoy reading at some point. But essentially, it means that uh, according to this study, a person is considered to be set if you have four friends. Now, what are we referring to here? In our school, how does this translate? In our school, there are two concepts that are really, really strong. One is the emphasis on teamwork. Now, Teamwork is probably one of the first components in any training trainer's manual, in any HR policy, in any management funder. But I've been with the school for close to a decade, so and I've seen a lot of teams developing. The at modern the teams are selected very, very carefully. Every event, there is a different team. There is a different team. We do want key members. We want um, mentors to be there. We do want to hand it over to people whom we know will do the job well. But there is a conscious shift to hand it over to, to include people who are new and who are doing this for the first time. Because as our principal very often says, it's very easy to get isolated. It's very easy to get isolated, to have your little team. So you will have one team that takes care of um, sports day for the next 10 years, one team that takes care of a, national, um, a school event, cultural event for the next five years. But if there is a conscious attempt at creating different teams, uh, that really has been one of the uh, key points in our uh, school for two reasons. One, it certainly encourages independence and enhances your skill sets. I'm doing something, uh, I'm doing it better, I'm learning something new. Two, it increases interdependence. Over the 10 years, that, nearly 10 years that I've been with Modern, I've sort of had the opportunity to work with many, many different teams. You can see from a social perspective how that helps. Different mindsets, different people, different personalities, different skills and attitudes. Over a period of time, it educates a person to learn to fit in with the school the way probably no other technique would have. The other thing that I want to emphasize in social wellness is the school assemblies. Now there are papers on why the school assembly is not just the opportunity to rattle off a number of announcements, give a few do's and don'ts and off you go to class. When I uh, first came in many, many years ago, we were on an old campus. Um, we've just moved to Nadal Shiva three, four years ago. We were in the old campus and I was really surprised at how assemblies seem to be an elaborate affair. Uh, yes, we do have a prayer, but there would be a song, there would be a chorus. If you went out of line, we would repeat the song. Um, we would repeat the song until we got it. I remember one year practicing how to sit without making too much because and there was such a formality to the auditorium to, uh, to the assemblies in the auditorium it was also the time when all kinds of successes were announced to the whole class now there's a great deal of significance in this in terms of the motivation that it accorded to students in terms of the recognition it gave us to staff for example a very a very quiet hindi Hindi is our second language uh, a very quiet hindi professor who is very happy to teach his classes and handle department specific goals was named as best teacher or uh, was accorded a special recognition by one of our ex-students when he went off to Yale. When they go off to those universities, they are allowed to name one teacher who has really made an impact on them. And it was such a, a, such a sight to see this quiet, non-assuming, unassuming person step up on stage for an honor like that right in front of the school. So the school assembly really is a very powerful tool 
in the uh, toolkit of a school because it has several functions of motivating several people. Every time there is a team that goes up on an assembly for a presentation, uh, you know, it's a bit of a joke with us really, but we do really look forward to our presentations. Uh, so much so that we had a particularly difficult batch uh, of grade 12 a couple of years ago. Difficult because they were too intelligent, far too intelligent for us, you know. They wanted answers to any everything and we couldn't give them those answers. But one of the things that they really wanted was, please bring back our auditorium assemblies. We want those assemblies because it created such a, a sense of cohesion. So when we are talking about social wellness, we are really referring to these two key factors. How do we help to successfully interact and how can we establish social supportive social networks? So highly recommended to put a good thing to our social assembly, our school assembly system as a support network system in the school. The poor neglected corner of the room, which is occupational wellness. I must ask, why did nobody stand there? What is occupational wellness? Are we referring to, I'm not happy with the job kind of thing? What, what is occupational wellness? Okay, okay, getting into the profession because at some point you, you, this was this seemed yeah, like yeah. the best option. All right. Maybe considered like a daily routine, whereas these things are new. People are selecting others. Okay, I've, I've been there, done this. I know everything. Now there's nothing new to look forward to. What else? The scope of room. We don't need that in the scope of Okay, now that's important because she is saying scope for growth. Okay, but I still didn't see her here. So it means, it means that there is this, um, when we are happy with our work, but we still want more. So we still don't want to say we are completely there yet. Now, uh, occupational wellness or career wellness still refers, refers to that sense of being not happy with your work. But it really has a pattern to play. Now, there are two key points here, especially in relation to our school. The teacher career cycle and its links to wellness. The teacher career cycle is a whole theory on teacher uh, careers which says that when you've been in the school for about five to seven years, that is the danger spot. Because by then you have matured as a teacher. Your basic skills are in place. Your friends are in place. Your relationships are intact. You've got maybe a promotion or two. You've got a pat or two. There are things your management knows that you're good for. But then what? And that's when, that's when it starts to, you start to wonder what's in it for me? What am I going to look out for? Now, here I want to bring up something that's really, really working in our school. It's still being tweaked. It still needs to be improved. But this is where, again, it's an old term, but the performance appraisal system comes up. Now again, this is a word that all HR managers and all trainers will have it in their manual and say, oh, everybody does an appra performance appraisal. You put a couple of ticks and you tell them, good job, you don't see it till next year. But over the years, we have developed a system of having a performance appraisal, which is not just about skills as a teacher, but it's about you as a professional. So if you're a teacher, a teacher in our school is allowed, even if it's that little box, to put in a statement that says, what do you want to do next year? And it does not mean your department. It means I move into another department. I want to try out something else. I'm not volunteering. Does it mean I'm taking on more work? Yes, probably for some time. But I do want to move on to another uh, area. Um, I was assigned the role of a, when, I, when this happened to me two, three years ago, I chose the job of an academic coordinator. Uh, the one thing I learned at the end of that year is that I did not want to do administrative work. So it's an experience. So you as a teacher need to be able to go up to the management. And I've seen far too many teachers do talk to me. So I've seen far too many teachers worry about what will the management think. You must be able to define something, some area of your school that you would like to try working with because it's only you who can break that barrier. As, 
as the uh, as a management professional it is crucial if you want to prevent turnover if you want to prevent frustrated staff from just taking classes and flowing through the corridors, it becomes crucial to pay attention to what your performance appraisal form is. What are you telling them? What are you giving them? What opportunities are you giving them? How are you hel helping them evaluate their goals? A lot of teachers, and I must say some of my colleagues sitting here, some of my colleagues sitting here have been through and have been allowed various pathways. Uh, a couple of them are English teachers, but doing all sorts of things because several doors have been opened. So really the key for you as a profession, as a management from person from the management would be to open these to you. And let me link that now with intellectual wellness. I know you've heard me speak and I know we are talking about work, but my young friend Vikram here would like to tell you what the school does for students in terms of for intellectual wellness and why is it related to work at all? Thank you, Ram. All right, so very quickly, I think, since we're running a bit out of time. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit of today about students' perspective about how the school ensures intellectual wellness, at least at modern. So, so a really good quote that I thought would be applicable for this is one by William Butler Yeats when he said, the role of an educator or the aim of an education system is not to fill a pail but to light a fire. I think that's the emotion that beautifully embodies whatever we do at school to ensure intellectual wellness, right? So I know since I've been in the school for around six to seven years now that the school actively ensures that it's, it establishes a congenial atmosphere for us to, you know, explore our potentials, you know, share ideas with others and, you know, explore our curiosity, right? So instead of rambling about what intellectual wellness is, let me give you a few examples, right? So, a very good example of intellectual wellness being ensured in our school is the Trinity Guildhall examinations, right? So, what we've done is that we've made it compulsory for each and every student to appear for the Trinity Guildhall communications examination, an examination given by the Trinity College of London. So, what this ensures is that not only do students receive, you know, lessons that they, that they won't receive in the classroom, but we ensure that every student at the end of this program becomes efficient communicators, right? So at the end of the day, everyone is able to realize you know, their communication potential, their ability to share ideas with others. And so at the end of the day, all students have this sort of intellectual wellness. Another thing that's you know, actively encouraged in our school is student-run initiatives, right? So th this doesn't refer to just one or two initiatives. But almost all initiatives in our school is done and conducted wholly by students, right? Right from quizzing to um, debating to science magazines and you know volunteer activities are organized almost completely by students, right? So I'll give you two examples for this. Uh, number one was the Education for All campaign that we started a couple of years ago. So here was a group of students that you know felt that it was, it was their duty to give back to society and ameliorate the poor condition of education back in India. So they asked the school you know, student body to help them. And for the past two years, we've been channeling, you know, stationary, sanitary items, you know, educational books and board games to a village back in Tamil Nadu. And so, what, what I take from this, you know, this experience is that the school is ever ready to support and, you know, guide, you know, any student that passionately and, you know, dedicatedly believes about a cause. Another example of this is the science magazine, our, our school's very own science magazine, called the 42nd Street. So you can catch your copy at bit.ly slash 42nd Street. So what we've done here is, here's a group of students, you know, with a raw passion for science. And the school has gone so far in supporting them, that they've bought this unique software that allows us to host this magazine completely online. So this is a one-of-a-kind, you know, magazine, you know, run completely by students, where the students write the articles, edit them, find resources, you know, source video, source audio, into this completely online platform, right? And the last thing I want to leave you with, and the time is running out, is you know the leadership opportunities that the school gives us. You know we have leader leaders in grade four, in grade eight, and in grade twelve. So there's ample opportunities for each and every student to sort of showcase their leadership potential. These are sort of things that you don't receive in the classroom, right? Sort of experiential knowledge that you're never going to receive in the classroom. Something you get only by realizing these opportunities. So, so what would we feel is that these three opportunities or these three exams I talked about this is a small part of the avenues that the school experiences and so at the end of the day you know, this better prepares us for the work workplace right so the skills that we acquire here and the sort of intellectual wellness that is what we're able to you know 
achieved in school prepares us better for the workplace, right? So at the end of the day, 20, 10, 20 years down the line, we're inter intellectually well people in the workplace. So I think, thank you. Thank you, Vikram. You can see the passion. And on that note, may I wish that everybody here achieves your desired state of wellness. Thank you. Thank you.